Basically, in my presentation, I will deal with uh, legislation which tries to regulate something uh, elusive as a relationship between employer and the employee. We all know that domestic help work is done in the private sphere of families, where the things are very hard to regulate. But at the same time, the state has, of course, the interest to regulate the, the paid work that has done and, of course, to collect taxes and so on. So this remains very elusive problems, which have, in, the, in time, many possible solutions in the legislation. Uh, basically, here I will present two trajectories, and I will also mention the third one. So, the transition after the First World War, the transition after the Second World War, and I will say something about 1991 afterwards. So, um, of course, this is basically based on the legislation of Carnolia, or basically um, Slovenia. So let us begin our story in 19th century. Why? Because there are two pieces of legislation that covered the topic. And these two pieces were basically accepted in 19th century and they did not change, especially the civil code, which was adopted in 1811, was taking place till 1945, so basically till the Second World War. Um, of course, when we are talking about 19th century, we are talking about uh, basically uh, the world order where the things are pretty uh, clear. So uh, we have the relationship between a uh, domestic worker, which is considered as a part of the family, um, and uh, there is the employer, which is a prudent and protective master, which basically protects the employer and the whole family and there is some kind of silent subordination uh, connected uh, with it. So uh, there is a deep-seated trust in the higher authority of a strict father figure, which is of course obvious here. So this civil code basically regulates some aspects of the contracts, the employment, and there is the other part of the legislation, servant order for Carnolia, and the city of Ljubljana, which basically covers the everyday aspects of life. So when the servant can leave its premises and so on. So, um, but a few years before the First World War, something different starts. It starts working movement of servants, starts to form demands how the work of the servants should be regulated. And this old servant order is not more sufficient. It has to change. Um, so there, are, there is, for example, the uh, demand for 11 hours long working day, free Sunday um, afternoon, nine hours rest, uh, and so on. So when the new uh, kingdom of uh, Serbs, uh, Croatians, and Slovenes is established, basically wants to present itself as a social welfare state. But it has a big problems also to implement the social politics of it. So um, it has problems with all social politics and of course also with the, the, the legislation that covers the domestic help uh, workers. But nevertheless, Slovenia is the most, most progressive part of the monarchy. And in 1921, a special decree is accepted, especially for domestic workers. But that decree is very much, I would say, uh, took regulations from the Austrian legislation, which was accepted in 1920. Some articles are basically the same. So nine hours, nine dress, the same article can be found in the Austrian piece of legislation. Um, this is, for example, uh, this Gesetz über den Dienstvertrag des Hausgehilfen, and it's basically very much uh, the same. So let, let, let us now go to the uh, second trajectory. Uh, we know that in the 30s, Yugoslavia is now part of the international uh, law and also part of the international labor organization. In that frame, it signs quite a few conventions, 
where the protection of the worker is very important. So now the debates in the 30s are beginning to start uh, to form where the question uh, emerges why the principle of the uh, work of the ordinary worker and domestic workers are different. There should be no difference between them. So this is, of course, uh, uh, begun with this working movement and it becomes quite, quite, quite important. For example, the, the demands for the collective contract or agreement are starting to raise and so on. So uh, after the Second World War, but, but of course the, the social system completely changes, <coughs> but not the frame of the state, um, all these uh, demands that were taking place before the war are slowly begun to be implemented in the legislation. But um, not a lot basically changes. For example, after the Second World War, 16% of babies are basically guarded by these uh, housemaid uh, servants uh, in Ljubljana. But nevertheless, the, the stipulation for the minimum wages is there, uh, and also for the first time, the Union for Domestic Health Workers is organized in 1946. So uh, again, in 1959, another piece of legislation is taking place, this time to replace this one from old, from 1921. But what is interesting is, if the 1921 legislation from Slovenia was the most progressive one, this, was, this one is not. For example, Croatia and Macedonia have more progressive pieces of legislation, where, for example, 18 hours working schedule is stipulated. But this was not the case in Slovenian piece of legislation. Uh, even if there is a socialist system, there is, uh, for example, from the socialist part of the state administration argument that uh, 18 hour schedule could not be implemented in the everyday life. So this could not be part of the uh, legislation. Again, we heard yesterday how, for example, in the 60s, in the Great Britain, uh, a discussion was made before between that, uh, that uh, domestic health workers are no longer appropriate, but this is not the case in socialist Yugoslavia. They can find numerous articles in uh, women's um, and uh, women's journals and, for example, daily newspapers when daily health is something that must be part of the basically also this socialist uh, system. And then there is another part of legislation which is also very interesting because in 1966 first debates started how to regulate the relationship between <coughs> domestic uh, private employer and worker. So how to regulate this complicated relationship. And I would, I would say here the first paternalistic legislation emerges from this uh, discussion. Again, we can, we can see that there is no provision for eight hours working day, but there is legislation that not more than 48 hours per week of the worker uh, should be um, taking place. Uh, 12 hours of rest between work, but there is, for example, the still article on the responsibility of the worker to maintain good reputation of the employer. So, very interesting, I would say. But of course, all these articles and all this engagement of the state um, has a limited impact. As in the 70s, again, the, uh, the question arises, how to, for example, regulate collective contract? And there is basically no one to be found that would sign agreement with. So there is no special article on domestic workers, and again, articles on minimum wages are not renewed. So the, this basic minimum wage is really very, very minimum at the time. And here uh, we can see how the number of domestic workers is very much in decline till 1994 when Dero, this is the big uh, newspaper in Slovenia, the newspaper proclaims household workers basically no longer exist. In 1940, uh, 1994, there are just 38 of domestic workers left in Ljubljana. Uh, of course, this is who are officially registered at the employment office. But again, 
this kind of work goes into the place of informal economy, grey economy, scab work, and of course uh, the state has problems to regulate um, that. So let me now um, conclude what are our lessons from this short uh, path we took. Um, the changes in everyday life are happening so fast that the law has problems to incorporate those kind of changes. Also, the, I would say um, there is a, a strong influence of the Austrian legislation on Slovenian legislation. We saw that in 1920, but I would speculate this that also after the war there were some debates where, for example, German terms were used in this debate. Um, and also, those uh, pieces of legislation that could be considered innovative were basically formed before the, each war. Uh, labor movement, with its uh, arguments, demands, had very much impact uh, always after this uh, transition. We could also say that legal paternalism, which started in 1960, is not as efficient. So this is very much like connected with um, today's debates on domestic violence codes, where again, <coughs> paternalism is raised. And what is also interesting is that also on the international level, we have uh, only in 2011, when international labor organization accepted convention by which domestic workers and ordinary workers are basically have the same rights. So, but again, the base in Slovenia started in the 30s. So this is quite a long road. Uh, till, the, till this convention is um, basically um, accepted. So um, I would say that, of course, the problem here is that the relationship uh, between employer and domestic help remains elusive and very hard to come or comprise in the uh, legislation because this um, work is basically done in the informal, uh, in the privacy of their own uh, home. So um, I have here like uh, two, um, two points. Uh, of course, this, um, this domestic work is very hard and remains invisible because uh, there are employees in the private homes rather than the firms or enterprises. They are isolated <coughs> from each other in the sector. They are dependent on the good or bad will of the employer. Uh, and there is also a great social and economic imbalance. So we have here also the problematic um, nature of the informality being the dominant feature of the domestic work, as the nature of the contract is mostly oral and uh, informal, but heavily dependent on personal uh, relationship, which is uh, basically emphasized in all discussions about regulate, regulation of domestic work, from 1966, so um, this nature of the relationship is basically done on confidentiality, special relationship, on the culture of the closed circle, where again there is a strong hierarchy and because of that this grey zone um, emerges, because the circle of the culture of silence is very important to be silent, because the virtue of the servant is to be silent and uh, reserved. So, Thank you and let me conclude here. Thank you very much.